Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my new subscribers. I am so grateful for you all. So before we begin, I want to let you know that we're going to be starting two series in, on my channel. We're going to be starting with uh, some Tunisian crochet and I'm also going to start a crochet in a weekend um, a series. It has a number of quick stitches, sweaters, shawls, and a whole bunch of other stuff. As you can see, I already had a bookmark in here with some tissue paper because I don't like dog ears. I think they're horrible. I think it ruins the book. So I have already started this project here, which is actually it's called um, a more top. I guess I love the top. I don't know, but I've already started my stitches here. The one thing I love about this book is that it gives you every size. So it gives you the stitches for every size. It gives you the measurements for every size. It gives you um, the kind of yarn you're going to use, how many skeins you have to use for the project, your gauge, and a whole bunch of other stuff that a lot of information that you really need when making this project. Or when making any project and then it also gives you your instructions come on a separate page nice and even um it's nice and separated i love how the text was made it's very easy to read and then it even gives you like pictures here of what your panel what the sizes are how wide or how long they're supposed to be so i am already loving this book I've already started this particular project here, which is so super, super easy. All you need to know is how to double crochet and how to single crochet, and you're good to go. So as you can see, it has different patterns in here. I can't wait to try out these patterns, but we're going to do them all on camera. So it's going to be called My Crochet and Weekend Series. And this book is made by Selena uh, Baca. That is the person that created the patterns in this book. So I'm going to link this book in the description box below. And we're also going to be working on a Tunisian crochet series. This is actually very new to me. Even though I am quite familiar with knitting and all that other stuff, I've never tried Tunisian crochet. It's like knitting, but it's just a longer hook. So we're going to work on this today. We're going to start our beginner's tutorial with the Tunisian crochet. But I just wanted to let you know about new product uh new projects that are coming up and what we're going to be doing here so let's go ahead and get started with our tunisian crochet so before we begin i wanted to show you my hooks here my tunisian hooks they're just like uh, knitting hooks they're long like knitting hooks but they have a hook on the end like a crochet hook and they come in different sizes just like your crochet hook would and so depending on how large you want your stitch it's going to depend on how big uh depending on which hook you're going to pick so i'm actually going to pick my favorite number crochet hook and that is the 5.0 millimeter hook so let's go ahead and begin we're going to start off just like we would if we were crocheting using a crochet hook go ahead and make your slip knot and insert your tunisian hook here and just like with a regular crochet just like with a regular crochet hook we're going to make our chains so we're going to start off with 12 chains and the number of chains that you start off with is the number of chains that you will end with so let's go ahead and begin go ahead and yarn over and pull through just like you would make a regular chain so i'm going to make my chains here and just remember again because the hook is so long you got it it takes time to get used to maneuvering it around and it doesn't have a thumb rest so i have three chains here this is four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and 12. So now the hook that you end up with on your um 
on your hook counts as a loop. So just like we would with regular, when we were using a regular crochet hook, we're going to skip the first stitch and we're going to work in the back bumps of our chain here. The reason we're doing that is because it looks a lot better. It comes out much better when you use these back loops. So go ahead and skip the first one. Remember the loop that's already on your hook is going to count as a chain. It counts as a loop. So you start off with 12 and you will end with 12. When you make that next loop, do not yarn over. We're putting all of our loops onto one hook. So once you go in with your hook, and you pull up your loop, you do not yarn over again. You just immediately go into the next loop with your hook. So just continue doing this all the way across. This is four loops on your hook now. Now we're going into the fifth one. And so as you can see, I have on some little press on nails here. I figured just to give it a little, make it look a little cuter on camera, my nails that is. Um, I have naturally long nails, but I just figured I'm going to try these out here, see how they work out. So it's going to take me some time to get used to it. But let's just continue going and continue making your loops. We have five loops on the hook now. Go into that next loop. And go ahead and yarn over and pull up your loop. And remember, do not yarn over again. Just immediately go right into the next loop with your hook. And yarn over and pull up your loop. And just continue making that across. As you can see, it gives it a nice edge here. That will look so much better um, as opposed to the, that regular chain looking row or the way we normally would make a single crochet. So keep making your way across. We're almost there. We have eight loops on the hook now. This is nine. And we're going into 10. And this definitely takes some getting used to, you know, because the hook is so long, you tend to want to bring your hand all the way down the um the loop the hook but um it just takes time getting used to it so we're getting closer to the end i have two more loops that i need to make but you see how nice and neat that's coming out so this is 11 right here I tell you, it just <laughs> because the the loop, the hook is so long, it takes a minute getting used to, but I think I'll catch on pretty quickly. And so now I'm going in and I'm going to make my final loop here. Sorry, I'm a bit off camera, but I'm just going into that back loop and yawning over and pulling up my loop. So now I still have 12 loops on my hook here. Even though we skipped that first one, that first loop on your hook, the loop that is left over once you skip that first uh, chain, it is it counts as a loop. So you'll still have 12 loops on your hook. So now we have to go back the other way. I forgot what it is that they call it. Um, I'll remember it by the end of the video. But you're just going to yarn over and you're only going to pull through one loop first. Just one loop. So yarn over and pull through only one loop. Now you're going to yarn over again and then pull through two loops this time. And that's that. you'll do that all the way across. So yarn over again. And come through and pull through two loops. Yarn over again. Come through and pull through two loops. And you just do that all the way across. And you should still have 12 stitches going across. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And as you can see, it's going a lot more smoothly. Pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two again. Sorry, I had an issue with my camera, so I had to stop real quick. But skipping nothing, go ahead and yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over and pull through your last two. So once you have all of your stitches on there,
remember this counts as a stitch you have a vertical bar right here in the beginning of your row right where i have that nail there that's your first bar you're going to skip over that bar because you have one on your hook already so there's no yarning over you just go immediately right into that next stitch and go ahead and pull up a loop this is what's called a forward pass so um i'm assuming when you go back this way it's a back pass but we're going forward now so just like we did before go into each of those stitches yarn over and pull up a loop and then go in again to the next one and yarn over and pull up a loop and this is your forward pass just like we did in the beginning of the row we made sure that we had all of our loops on the hook and we're not yarning over so go into your next loop right there and yarn over and pull up your loop and then your next one is right there yarn over and pull up a loop i hope that you're able to see i am using like a dark green but i'm hoping you're able to see where i'm going with my hook and just go into that next stitch and yarn over and pull up your loop remember this is our forward pass so we're making our way back over again and go in and yarn over and pull up your loop go into the next one yarn over and pull up a loop and all the way across yarn over go in and yarn over and pull up a loop now i have to show you something when we get to the end it's a different method a different way to do our last stitch here so we're getting closer go ahead and go into that next stitch there that vertical bar and yarn over and pull up your loop and as you can see your stitches are coming together really nice here so now we're at the end of the row and if you turn your project to the side a little bit you'll see two stitches here there's one here and there's one in the back one in the back right here and one here so those are the two bars you're going to go into so you can just make sure you're fixing your work here and it's those two loops right there at the end go ahead and pull up and there you go that's the end of your row there okay just trying to show you what that looks like when you're done when you make your forward pass and we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve okay and then again once again just like we did in the very beginning we just go back and we go and do a back pass which is back this way i'm thinking that this is row one here so you do your chain and then you do a back pass and a forward pass and that's one row i think i think i think don't quote me on that when we do our next one i'm going to make sure that i definitely give you that information as to what begins and ends a row so but i'm thinking once you do your first chain and then you come back and go back again that is considered one row but i'll figure that out i will let you know what that is so just like we did before when we made our row of uh single crochets here go ahead and do the same thing so you're going to yarn over and only go through one loop okay and once you go through that one loop go ahead and yarn over and now you're going to go through two loops oops i went through three make sure you're only going through two make sure you're only going through two loops so keep doing that across yarn over and go through two yarn over and pull through two Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And that same thing all the way across. Make sure that you keep your gauge the same for every stitch that you make. If you're pulling tight, keep it tight. If you're pull, pulling loose, then keep it loose. Okay, almost there to the end. And this is your back pass and we're on the last one and now we have one loop on our hook and just like we did with that row before we're going to go ahead and make another pass and i am seeing that that is the case when you come forward 
that's a forward pass, and then you go back and come back again, that's considered one row. So just like we did before, we're going to skip that loop on that hook there. We're going to skip this one because this one already counts. So we skip that first one. So you're not going to go into this here. You're not going in here. You're skipping that one, and you're going right into the next one right next to it. And this is just a basic stitch for Tunisian crochet. This is not a fancy stitch. This is just a regular basic stitch when you're making your crochet, your Tunisian crochet. I am just want to show you from beginning to end the basics until we get a little bit fancier. And there are other stitches that we can make besides this stitch. It will tend to curl up a little bit from what I've learned, but so far from what I'm seeing, it's not really curling up. Maybe when I go up a little bit higher. So let's keep going. Go into the next stitch and yarn over and pull up your loop. Go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up your loop. And just keep making your way across. This is your forward pass. That is what that's called when you're using, when you're making Tunisian crochet and you're going forward, it's a forward pass. So just keep going into those vertical bars. There's only one, you're doing one at a time because remember we started off with 12 stitches. So we want to end with 12 stitches. So keep making your way through. And I can tell that it's starting to curl up a little bit, but that's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Remember, we're at the end of the row now. So again, go ahead and turn your work and just until you are able to do it without having to turn your work. We're just practicing right now. So there's those two vertical bars again. So go ahead and go back in and go into those last two bars there. And pull up your loop. Oops, sorry, I put it in the wrong place. I'm going to show you where to put it, and then I put it in the wrong place. Okay, <laughs> okay. So that's how we do our Tunisian crochet. And again, so we have to go back, do a back pass. So like I said before, you're only going to yarn over and go through one, and then yarn over and go through two. And this is your back pass. So just keep practicing, pra pra practicing, <laughs> keep practicing and pull through two and pull through two. And as you go along, you'll get to be a little bit faster with your Tunisian hook and you'll be able to go and make a nice little sample swatch for yourself. Just keep practicing. As I always say, Practice makes uh, progress. So just go ahead. And now we're going to do another forward pass. And as you can see, it is beginning to curl up. But that's not a big deal because depending on the project that you're making, you're most likely going to bring it all together and bind it together. And it won't be so curly. So this is what your stitches look like when you're doing your Tunisian crochet. And now we're going to go back and into our forward pass. So again, we're going to skip that first stitch there. This one counts as a loop on your hook. Go right into that stitch and yarn over and pull up your loop. And you do that for every one of your stitches. So because that loop counts as a hook, even though you skip that first vertical bar, you should still have 12. And I actually skipped one. So that is what that looks like. When you skip, you'll have a big old gap right there. And you'll know that you skipped your stitch. So let's pull that out a little bit. And go ahead and don't miss that stitch there. Make sure you're getting all of your stitches. You want it to remain nice and even depending on the number of chains that you make. You want to continue having those same amount of stitches on your hook here. So just keep going through. And now I'm going to make a few rows of this. I'm going to continue my forward pass. And when I come back, I'm going to show you how to go ahead and bind off. So just keep going. Remember, do not miss any of those vertical bars. Make sure that you're getting every single one of those bars there. And now we're coming to the end. We're at the last one. 
coming to the end. And again, you're going to go into those top, those vertical bars there at the end on the side and pull up your loop. So I'm going to make a few more rows of this swatch here. Again, when we go there and do our back pass, remember you're going to yarn over and only go through that first stitch because doing that is making your edge for your uh, project. This is your edge. So you're making your edges when you're doing that and, and only coming through one. So now we're going to yarn over and pass through two loops. And again, keep your gauge, keep your um, your gauge the same for every pass. You don't want to get too tight or you don't want to have it too loose, but continue making that all the way across. So I'm going to make a few more rows of my swatch here. And when I come back, I'm going to show you how to bind off your work. Coming closer to that end there. Okay, and that's our last stitch. And as you can see, it is starting to curl up. But that is perfectly normal. So I'm going to continue going back and forth, making a bigger swatch. And when I come back, I'm going to show you how to finish off. So now we're at the end of the row and I've done my back pass already. Now I'm going to show you how to finish off your rows once you're done. As you can see, it did curl up some. That's pretty normal. Um, when you're working on a project, that curl up will go away once you begin to join your stitches or join your panels, whatever it is that you're making. But this is what it looks like so far. Very nice, even stitches on the sides and in the middle. Very nice, very nice. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and finish off. We're going to continue like we did before, except we're going to change something different going forward. So now, as we did before, skip that first bar. Go ahead into your second bar. And instead of keeping your loop on the hook, we're going to slip stitch through both of those stitches. So go ahead and yarn over and pull through both of the stitches. And that finishes off. It's like a slip stitch. It's pretty much a slip stitch. So go on to the next one and pull up and pull through both loops. Next one, go in, pull up and go through both loops. And just keep doing that all the way across till you get to the end. Pull up and pull through. And into these next ones. Make sure you're keeping your yarn nice and loose. Sometimes it can, for me, it's been getting kind of tight, so I'm having to pull my loop up just a little bit. But keep going. And it's slipping through both stitches. Remember, don't skip any stitches. Now you want to make sure you get all of the stitches going across. Remember, do those bars on the side like you were doing in your previous row. And pull through two, and that's where you would cut off at. So that is what our project is looking like, or at least what your panel is looking like. Those top stitches, your slip stitches, look just like that bottom portion there when you first start it. Okay, so we're done. So now you just go ahead and cut off your, your yarn like you would normally and continue on with whatever panel it is that you are making. So I want to thank you for watching this tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Cam Tire Handmade Crochet. Have a great and awesome day. Bye-bye.